Finally, episode three, we finally get a character OP, and it's super cute with Yotsuki and Nadeko doing a little song. And yes, all the little Nadekos running all over the place and having fun, which kind of goes to this, this episode where they kind of reveal this idea of how all these different Nadekos are kind of like newborns or like children. So it almost plays out the OP as if it's a bunch of children surrounding their parents. <laughs> we have Yotsuki and Nadeko are like the parents going around with their children. It's it's kind of cute. And it kind of makes me wonder if that's actually the direction it's going to go is where suddenly they're just going to have a whole bunch of Nadekos and they're going to have to parent them. I love it, though. I love it, though. Just all the little Nadekos just having fun and doing hopscotch and doing the the Pocky thing and everything. It was super cute. I love it. Anyways, besides the OP, which was absolutely fantastic, I loved episode three so much because it's going the direction that I kind of assumed that was going to go. This idea of it almost feeling like Nadeko herself is self-reflecting. And I loved the inclusion of Sadachi this episode. I, For those who don't know, her episodes, Sadachi's episodes were good, but they were kind of drawn out. Like they just kind of drug out a bit too much, but I did like her story. And so it's kind of cool to finally see her come back in the picture and we get to see how she currently is after time has passed, sort of seeing how she is trying to change herself. And I like the fact that she is the best person of anybody to really talk to Deco right now because they're both in the same situation where they weren't necessarily bullied, <laughs> but they did have an incident at their school that sort of messed with them. And Sadachi's trying to move on. She's kind of stumbling. And so she can give Nadeko the words that she kind of needs, assuming that she's going through the same struggles. Well, at the same time, yes, having talked to Nadeko has now bolstered herself to kind of try again. And I thought it was so fascinating. It was like one of those moments where I'm like, did I misremember Sadachi's story? So I went back and I checked it and I'm like, yeah, that, that was her story. This was a girl that dealt with domestic violence. So for her, of anybody, to really give Nadeko the advice of don't look at their words at face value, that they're trying to spoil you, they want the best for you, is kind of surprising. I think at some point she even says, I'm going to ignore myself for a second and tell you this thing. Tell you don't take their words at face value. Instead of seeing it as they're trying to force you out and get you to get a job, maybe see it as they're trying to just push you to go back to school. They're trying to do the best for you. And it's like, wow. Her of anybody to say that is kind of surprising. It's kind of bold. I love it. I love that kind of stuff. Just, just the idea that she doesn't see everything as so black and white. So not she herself, even after a very traumatizing experience with her parents, she doesn't see things as so bleak. She doesn't see that everybody's going to be the same way I am. Not everybody is going to be dealing with their parents being the same as my parents. It was really cool. I love it. But no, getting back to what I was originally saying, my expectations for this entire arc was to be the idea of Nadeko herself sort of self-reflecting. And the way that I thought they were going to do that is have whoever Nadeko creates is going to be exactly herself. And then she's going to see how they play out and reflect on her own actions. The example I was giving was the flirtatious Nadeko going straight after Araragi and seeing how bold she was. And maybe seeing her boldness will kind of mess with her in some way. And it sort of does that. But it's more the idea of she created what she thought they were. That's the key thing there. It's not that the flirtatious Nadeko immediately went for Araragi. Because that was my expectation. If she created herself at that point in her life, she's immediately going to go find Araragi. But she didn't. She went to school. And not only did she go to school, she went through her third year class. <laughs> she literally went to her class. Not the same class that she was before. She's not what she was. Like like uh, Oigi says, this isn't a time machine. You didn't just warp her from the past. You created her in the current. So that's kind of interesting in that regard because, again, that's going to be her creating what she thinks that self was. So she doesn't create what she once was, but she actually reflects on what she thought she was, if that makes sense. And I think that's a really cool way to see her character grow because, yes, as we see her confronting the flirtatious Nadeko... She sees her as being popular. Like, this is the self that I had confidence, and I can go in that room, and I can take on everybody, and I can become really popular. But I like how it still kind of throws it back in her face in the moment that she wants to give up. Like, oh, wow, this is a better version of me. This is, a be this is the version that I've always wanted to become. The one that has confidence, that gets popular. Everybody's entertained. She looks so happy. I, in her, look happy. She's the perfect me. But I like how Oiki kind of points out yeah, but <laughs> that doesn't last. Like, it, it seems so great. It seems so bright. It seems like the perfect you, but it has no future. It doesn't have what you currently are. It lacks your current self. She's stuck in the lukewarm, and eventually that's going to become cold. The future ahead causing anxiety. It's literally what you think you want, but in actuality, it has no future. 
what you currently have is a future. I love that. I love that. And again, I could be drawing some extra conclusions out of here, which I really like this kind of stuff. This is why I wanted to cover this show is because it's it's got this little bit of vagueness here that you can kind of draw these other conclusions out of it. What sort of it is saying is a broader picture. I love it. I do have to admit, though, I was kind of surprised that it wasn't necessarily the meek Nadeko going right back to school. That was a nice little twist there. The idea that, yes, the flirt Nadeko just kind of found the meek Nadeko and just said, give me your clothes. And so that's why in the current meek Nadeko is just running around naked, <laughs> which, again, is that aspect of what she created, meek Nadeko, which that is kind of the next story we're going to be getting into, which we haven't gotten fully into. But yeah, I can already start to draw my own conclusions of why meek Nadeko is just running around without any clothes on. It's not that she created herself because, I mean, that was the, the, the thing I was pointing out before. Why couldn't she capture meek Nadeko right in that bedroom? Because all she had to do is say, hey, meek Nadeko, you're going to help me with this. And she probably would have done it because her in that current moment in her life, she was very passive. She was very neutral. Whatever you want, whatever will make people around me happy, I'll do. She was trying to keep herself bottled up and just go with the flow. She was just going along with the flow, whatever everybody wanted around me. So she could easily say, hey, you're going to help me with this art project. And she'd be the first person to sit, you know, just walk over to that desk and sit down. But no, she ran out the door like everybody else. Why? Yeah, I can probably say what she drew with Meek Nadeko is going to be a self that she thought was fleeing. Like she was always running away. And that could definitely explain the idea that she's constantly running around the city. And yes, avoiding this one location, which is Aradagi's house. I'll honestly be very curious why she's avoiding that house. It brings up uh, the sisters immediately in flashcards. And so I can probably say that, that she's afraid of Sukihi because Sukihi was the one that actually essentially killed her. If you can technically say that Sukihi was the one that killed Miknadeko. She was the one that cut her bangs and ended that self version. So maybe that self is like afraid of going anywhere near her because she's afraid of that happening again. But I'll be very curious as to why she's just running around without any clothes on. If she is as meek as she was, if she was as, as bottled up as she was, why would she be so okay with just running around without anything on? Maybe when the current Nadeko was creating her, she created her in the mindset that everybody liked her back then. She was liked by everybody because she didn't push back and she went with the flow. Her parents liked her, spoiled her because she went with the flow. So obviously she can run around without any worry because everybody's going to like her. I'll be very curious as what they get into her because I think the Furi Nautico was this version that was technically not her. But I guess it could have been her if she was given time. But no, I like the whole segment where they're confronting the Flurry Nadeko. Um, Oigi kind of pointing out the idea again that it's lukewarm, that eventually it's going to go cold. And yes, even pointing out the idea that it's sort of creating a wall of humans. And even though it's a newborn and doesn't have much self-consciousness, it does technically have the potential of becoming a pretty insane apparition. I think they even said one that would be worthy of actually getting rid of, which I think is kind of what it's playing out there and that it almost looks like she's becoming a god, that everybody's kind of swarming around her and she everybody's just kind of within her spell. And it kind of puts it outside the realm of just her being popular in school, a popular kid, but more an idea that she is creating like a group of followers. <laughs> She's going to create like a cult if she continues on, which yes, makes sense because Nadeko is super cute. But again, it's kind of heartbreaking and Echo kind of just realizing how happy she is, how entertained people is. And at that same time, realizing she's so much better than me. This right here, compared to me being back at home, sitting there drawing my little pictures, she has friends, she has everybody surrounding her, and she looks happy. She looks more happier than I have ever been. So why would I not just leave that be? Literally, if Oigi did not hit that fire alarm and kind of cause that commotion and just caused her to just rush out there and slap that paper on her head, she probably would have been lost. And it kind of pointed that out in the previous episode. I think Yotsuki pointed out the idea that they eventually sometimes will come in and replace them. They will take out the actual real one and just take their place. So she was like in that moment right there, just about to become that. And even having the statement that the flirtatious one makes and the idea of what you're doing is embarrassing is again kind of reflecting on herself and the idea that she thought it was embarrassing before and she put it into her closet and didn't want to bring it out. It wasn't until after everything that happened that she finally got the courage to just seek out her dreams. Before, it was an embarrassment. So even the one that she creates still finds her an embarrassment. I like how she even points out afterwards, like, yeah, it was just a spur of the moment. I slapped that thing on her forehead, but I'm afraid that I'm going to be confronted with that again and not be able to actually do it. I pulled it off this time, but it was like almost a fluke. She's afraid of the next one that she's going to run into. 
that she won't be able to confront it. Which is interesting because going back to my theory before about this being her confronting things as the way that she thinks they were, she has already technically confronted it by creating it. But I think it's once she actually sees it in front of her and it's got a voice and everything like that that can actually talk back at her, that's where she's going to have her struggle. Again, it's super cool. I like this stuff. But no, they, they flee the school on the back of the, the bike and just dart it out of there. And sure enough, apparently somebody contacted a commodore and said, hey, do you know who this crazy person is that just went to the school? Oh, yeah, hold on. I'm going to call up Oigi. But yeah, get a cute little conversation between Nanako and, and Kamburu, which I thought was fantastic. I, I think it's just, it was a cute little moment. You had the music in the background playing, which is her kind of thanking her for being worried about her and everything like that. It was it was really good. But yeah, <laughs> have you seen me around town at all? Uh, no. But I mean, it could be completely unrelated. It could not be you at all. There's this person running around in nothing but bloomers. <laughs> it couldn't be you, though. <laughs> Oh, uh, that was that was bad. The moment that she said that, I was like, oh, gosh, that sucks. But no, this is where it kind of plays in my theory. Out of nowhere, Oigi's like, I got the best idea. What you can do is you can create a whole bunch of current yous, and we can seek her out. And she immediately goes, no, that's okay. It's like immediately, Nadika's like, no, I don't want to do that. But no, that's when we get the appearance of Sadachi, which was a massive surprise. Now, I knew that she was supposed to be in this arc because of some artwork here or there, but I wasn't really sure how it was going to incorporate until... Yeah, it just suddenly clicked to me. Yes, technically, these two are very similar in a lot of regards. They both have had incidents at schools and some difficulty in going back. But man, another character that just got there, they have to cut their hair. Like, I, I literally think by the end of this series, it's going to have every single female character cut their hair. And I hate it. I hate cut hair. <laughs> she does look good, though. She does look good. She looks much more grown up. That's for sure. Of course, she's going to college and everything like that. But no, I love their conversation. I think it was absolutely fantastic. Great little kind of comparisons between the two of them, the parallels they have, and kind of how they support each other in different ways. And now granted, like Nadako says later on, it's not like I did anything. <laughs> but no, there's like multiple parts to this whole like conversation. The, the initial obviously is that Sadachi is like, yeah, um, are you being bullied? She, she kind of assumes that she was sent out by the bullies to run around town in nothing but bloomers. But it gets into a whole long conversation about being bullied, which Nadako kind of clears up very quickly. Like, no, it's not bullying. It's not what's happening. But it eventually gets a conversation about parents. Now, this was the really interesting part because, yes, as she's explained the idea that my parents want me to go to, you know, get a job if I'm not going to school. And, yes, I'm kind of mixed up because of that whole situation. So that she, again, I thought was very interesting that she says immediately, you know, maybe you're not really seeing things correctly. And she says, she puts herself aside. She says, I'm going to turn a blind eye to myself and specifically says, don't take their words at face value. They might be saying this, but they're actually saying this. If you always take the words at face value, it's going to create this like uncomfortableness between each other. Seeing the deeper meaning behind the words rather than just taking the words and going with it. And again, the idea here being that it might not so much be the idea they're trying to push you to get a job, trying to push you away. They actually want to spoil you. They actually want the best for you. They want you to go to school. They want to push you to go to school by giving this kind of threat here. And again, I like that idea because from what I remember with the situation with Sadashi is that her parents were kind of caught up in domestic violence. Like they were constantly fighting. And she brought over Adaragi to her house one day, hoping that he'd see what happens and then go back to his parents and tell them. But he never did. But you would think with a situation like that where she didn't have like this really comfortable life experience with her parents that she would be distrustful of parents. But no, here she's trying to tell Nariko, hey, no, listen to your parents. Not just listen to your parents, but but don't expect the worst of them. Like look into the meaning of what they're saying. I, I thought that was like, again, really cool. But no, I love also seeing kind of the, the growth between the two of them, knowing the idea of cutting the hair, exposing yourself, showing that sign of growth. Again, still technically seeing it as possibly not being bullying, but maybe a hobbyist, like she's become an exhibitionist running around with nothing on. But yeah, it was sad to see that Sadachi is still obviously struggling. Like she she left to go go to college, hoping to change her life, change her appearance and everything, hoping to 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 start over, but it doesn't seem like it's going well. And I'm kind of curious if it'll eventually get back into her and the idea that she, it might be a possibility that she is still doing what she used to do. She used to be have this high and mighty attitude, very competitive, and I wonder if that's still creeping up with her or possibly now that she's leaving that old persona behind and trying to not do that, she's not fitting in because she's not used to it. So, again, kind of heartbreaking to know that she's still struggling, but still kind of seeing Nadeko and sort of encouraging her, you know, don't give up, which I love that later line. <laughs> no matter how things are going, 
you're still alive. And even at the very beginning, she's like literally saying, even if you don't go to school, it's not the end of the world. Life will still go on. It's this idea that, yes, you might be giving up on things, but don't feel like you have no future. And yeah, that, that's definitely a really positive message to say. Despite the fact that you might feel like you're not doing what society wants you to do, it doesn't mean your life is over. And yes, you can still go back. <laughs> that's the key thing there. You're not going now, but it doesn't mean your life is over. You can still go back or you eventually will become an adult. You can still move on. This is not the end of the road. Which, yes, she's technically saying that in regards to thinking that she's being bullied, but still, that's kind of still falls for her. But again, I love the fact that in telling Nariko all this stuff, she herself feels encouraged. I'm going to go back to school. It's almost like everything that she's saying, which, again, she said that she would turn a blind eye to herself for. I'm going to give the advice that I don't even take myself. I'm going to give her all this and then realize I just encourage myself. <laughs> I love that. The idea of self-reflection through helping somebody self-reflect. It's super cool. I love it. But yeah, they, they exchange context. And she said, don't cry yourself to sleep. Give your trust to be and... If you need to, I'll go teach those guys true pain. <laughs> so now she's like, literally, I'm going to go. I'll go take them out if you want. If they keep bullying you, let me know. I'll get them. I was like, go, girl. You go, girl. <laughs> I just like fell in love with this character all over again. But yeah, wrapping up the episode, she gets a clue. The idea that in all the location that Nariko, the the meek one, or I'm sorry, Loomer Nariko has been, she's not gone to Araragi's place, which again, I kind of, I'm very curious about that. And I think it's going to be an idea that when she drew Loomer Nadeko, <laughs> meek Nadeko, she was a type that was running away. When she drew that self, she seen herself as just always running away. Now she obviously knows herself better than anybody else, but I think it's gonna be one of those aspects of how you see yourself after the fact. One of the things they were pointing out at some point, I think in the last episode, was almost this idea of looking at your life after the fact. Looking back at an old year book, looking to see how yourself, reading your story later on. And I was pointing out this idea that I can kind of feel that because, you know, I'll go look at an old video that was recorded of me when I was like, I don't know, five or something like that. And I was such a dork and it, it almost looks foreign. Like, who is this person? Like, you can't even, you can't even picture yourself acting like that because it's your, just your younger self. And again, I think that that was pointed out for a reason, the idea that she's looking back at her younger self. And even though it's like in the span of these years or whatever, it's still enough to kind of see, I can't even tell you what I was thinking back then. So she can't even draw her old self anymore without putting some sort of scrutiny or exaggerating things. And I think that's what they're really doing here. And I think the meek Nadeko is going to be, she's a coward. She was always running away. She was always hiding. And that's why she's constantly running around. And again, I think she's staying away from <laughs> Sukihi because Sukihi has the scissors. <laughs> but we'll see. I really enjoyed this episode. Cannot wait for more. Again, another fantastic episode. I'm loving this series again. And yes, getting a whole bunch of Nadekos. And yes, an OP full of Nadekos is a massive win for me. But anyhow, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, if you did, hit that like button down below. Comment. Let me know if you the episode. Additionally, if you're new to the channel, make sure that subscribe button to get my content. I do news, reviews, first impressions, top list. If it's anime, it's pretty much here. Additionally, if you like this content and you want to support channel more, I have Patreon link, tips, links, so thanks for membership button below. Greatly appreciate it. It does. You all take care.